Happy New Year. Hope you all had a good year, New Year. Got over Christmas. Um, we're certainly trying to here in Norfolk Broads. Lots of uh, flooding, rain, grey. Pretty miserable to say the least. But uh, anyway, welcome to the channel again. And yes, I've made that decision and it's um, quite involved so far as <coughs> what I want, what I need and the um, practicalities. Now I'm not one who likes carting a tripod around so I tend to shoot from the hip and I will either be stalking my subject or I'll be walking along the hedgerow and it would be a case of camera up opportunity and uh, take the images that I need. So a lot of my photography is not set as such. I mean yes a few times I'm in a hide but then um, the subjects are not set. There's not, there isn't food being put out. It's not a set um, shoot like some. Mine is all wild and on the hoof as they say. So one of my big things is camera stabilisation. Now the camera stabilisation in the OM1 is second to none. It's very good. But when you put a reasonable size lens on, it uh, makes things more difficult, especially if that lens hasn't got any stabilisation built into it. Or if it has got stabilisation built into it, that that stabilisation doesn't sync with the stabilisation in the in body stabilisation of the camera. Um, that doesn't work on the uh, Panasonic Leica lens that I'm using at the moment. I rely purely on the in body stabilisation. And if I got the Olympus 100 to 400 lens, it has inbuilt, it has uh, lens stabilisation, but it doesn't sync with the stabilisation in the body of the camera. Neither of those are particularly good, but the Olympus Prime F4 300mm has built-in stabilisation, which works in conjunction with stabilisation built into the camera body, which means you're less likely to need a tripod. So that's a plus. The other plus is that you can put a 1.4 teleconverter onto it. So I'm looking at the Olympus 4 300. You can put the 1.4 teleconverter on. Um, you lose a stop of light doing that which is not good but it's to be expected. But the thing is if you use the digital built-in converter in the camera you don't lose any stop of light at all. So if you've got a good exposure that can work. Now as was pointed out by one of my subscribers Andy Ross has a um, YouTube channel, very good wildlife photographer that is quite brilliant actually. I'm sure he won't mind me saying that. Um, but you need to go and have a look at his channel. I will put a link to his channel. And he's just found the uh, two times converter on the OM1, which when you use that, you've just got JPEG. And you think, oh, JPEG, that's not so good. And I must agree, I, I've looked at it and I wasn't blown away. The thing I didn't look closely enough and the thing that um, he found was that you have a setting, if you look at the settings, the JPEG settings, you can have large file and large fine file, which is all well and good. But the thing you don't see is that you can have a large super fine file, which makes all the difference. It makes the uh, image a lot more acceptable compared to your raw file and he's found that and he's been using that um, very effectively. In fact some of his images you can't tell the difference between the JPEG and the RAW file. I know it takes some believing but have a look in the link and I think you'll be quite blown away by that. So we have that option as well. So if you combine the two you're going to get quite a throw using just the um, 300mm uh, lens. There was a reasonable amount of light, um, not the best, 
and I think everybody else in the county had decided to do the same thing. I think we were all feeling pretty frustrated, so everybody was out there. But did manage to get some shots. Um, we had uh, marsh harrier, uh, short-eared owls, etc. So I've got one or two shots. Have a look, see what you think. As I say, not the best because my ISO was up to 5,000, which is way, way too high. I've had to use a bit of software to bring that down, smooth it out, um, get rid of the noise as much as you can without losing all the sharpness. And uh, well, anyway, have a look at the results, see what you think. And also have a look at Andy's website as well because he's done a br brilliant job. Um, but then he is a professional, knows what he's talking about. Um, I know a lot of people will disagree with him, as I thought when he first said that using JPEGs, I thought, no, no. Um, but using the super fine setting on a good exposure, you can get very good results, as you will see if you look at his video. Okay, so I wish you all well, and until next time, uh, hopefully, possibly see some of you out there. Thanks to my many subscribers now. I'm getting more subscribers. I much appreciate that. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe and that uh, keeps you updated to when I put out another video or any of the other things that I do. So do follow me on Facebook as well, um, Instagram and so on. So cheers for now. Catch you all round the corner. Bye for now. Well. If you know anybody who's giving away an Olympus F4 300 lens, then please let me know. Um, I am in the market. So uh, it'd be interesting to see anybody comes up with one. At the moment, um, finances are a bit tight, so um, any donations would be gratefully received. That is a joke, by the way. Okay, see you all next time. Cheers for now. Thanks for watching and could you please give us a thumbs up that would be good and maybe subscribe as well. Most Much appreciated and hopefully we will see you next time. If you subscribe you will get notification of when the next video comes out. So many thanks for that and bye for now.